Now, schools are closed, but that doesn't mean our minds need to be closed. Um, see what I did there? A bit of, bit of psychology. Do you like it? Um, we are going to be looking at some science on a very regular basis now, almost every single day. And these videos are not only going to be on my channel, but they're also going to be on a channel that's linked in the description called the Core Learning Network. I strongly advise you go over to that channel, you subscribe to it, unless you're already on that channel, in which case subscribe to mine as well. That's also linked in the description. On the Core Learning Network channel, you'll have videos from myself, you'll have them from AB Science, you'll have them from Burr Maths, you'll have them from Simon Dan. There's going to be lots of people contributing. Um, so we can all be learning while those schools are shut from a whole variety of subjects. So please go and check that out. Yeah, yeah, do do that. Go and check out the links in the description. Uh, anyway, what's this blithering idiot going to talk about today? So one of the most common things I ever get asked in uh, revision classes when a year 10 or 11 comes to me, they'll say, sir, sir, and I'll say, what? And they'll say, what the chuffer moles? We've learned about them in class and I've got no idea what they are. Um, so let's have a look at it because, you know, moles can seem complicated when you start looking at them at first, but they're really not. They're really quite simple. So let's just make them as simple as they should be. A mole is essentially a way of measuring something. So let me give you an example. This is carbon. Now, when you see carbon on the periodic table, you'll see the mass number of 12 at the top. You'll see the atomic number of six at the bottom. And, you know, that's all quite boring, isn't it, really? But if I was to take one carbon atom and try and weigh it, well, I'm not going to be able to make scales small enough to weigh one carbon atom. Um, so I'm not going to do that. That would be daft. But what I could do is I could look at the mass number and the mass number of this carbon atom is 12, and I might say to myself, okay, for no reason whatsoever, I'm going to weigh 12 grams of carbon. And really, I should be using the term, I'm going to uh, measure 12 grams of mass of carbon. I don't really weigh 12 grams. Weight and, and mass are slightly different. But I'm going to weigh 12 grams of carbon. See, I said it again. Anyway, what he's trying to say is two things. He's just waffling like a moron and it's not coming across very clear. The first thing he's trying to say is mass and weight are different. And when we're talking about grams, we really should talk about mass because weight is measured in newtons. Anyway, the second thing he said is he's going to measure out 12 grams of carbon. Why is he going to do that? Yeah, great question. Why would I take 12 grams of carbon? Well, 12 is the mass number of carbon. And if I take the mass number and I weigh out that many grams, I say that I've weighed out one mole of carbon. Done. And I can do it with other elements. Potassium, the symbol K you see on the screen, has a mass number of 39. So I could weigh out 39 grams of potassium, and I'd say to myself, I have a mole of potassium. Hydrogen has a mass number of one. So I might weigh out one gram of hydrogen and say, hey, I've got a mole of hydrogen. Easy peasy. But why would I have done those things? Well, here is the bit that people tend to struggle on, and we really shouldn't struggle. You see, you can think of it as clever maths, or you can think of it as a wonderful, beautiful, magical coincidence. But it just turns out that 12 grams of carbon has exactly the same amount of atoms as 39 grams of potassium, which has exactly the same amount of atoms as one gram of hydrogen. And the number of atoms they have is this. It's Avogadro's number. You might have heard your teacher banging on about that in school and then instantly forgot it. Avogadro's number is 6.02 times 10 to the 23. So that's basically a 6 with 23 zeros pretty much chucked after it. It's a massive number. But that is the number of atoms in, in a mole of an element. So 12 grams of carbon will have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms. 39 grams of potassium will have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms. And one gram of hydrogen will have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms. Gets quite repetitive. You could do that with any element. Okay, so what Big Nose Baldy McNeeds a slap in the face is saying is if I just measure out the mass number of something in grams, I have a mole of it. And if I've got a mole of it, I know the number of atoms I've got. Right, brilliant. Really boring. Why on earth is that important? Because at this point, I don't care. And what an excellent question. Why would we bother doing that? What is the point of that? Now, there are many points to this, but I like to keep it simple when I'm asked that. And I like to present this argument here. 
Well, if I was an industrial chemist, right, if I owned a big factory that was making chemicals and I wanted to make as much money as I possibly could, I'd want to be really savvy and clever with the ingredients and I wouldn't want to waste any. I'd want to buy exactly the right amount of ingredients to react with each other so I could get the exact amount of product that I needed. So if we take this, uh, and I've made this chemical reaction on the board very simple. Right? I've not even put proper chemicals in there. We've just got chemical A, we're going to add to chemical B, and that's going to give us uh, chemical C, which will be a compound. Right? A and B are elements. Well, I know that if I have one mole of A and one mole of B, right? then I have exactly the same number of atoms of A as I do B. So I'm not gonna waste any of my ingredients. I have just the right number of atoms of A to react with just the right number of atoms of B, and that's gonna make me one mole of C, which will be 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules, because C will be a compound, it'll be two of them put together. But we'll get to compounds in a second. Oh, I can't wait. Please tell me more. It is fascinating. This is the most interesting thing I have ever seen. So here we are with the compounds. And on the screen, I have two very familiar compounds. You'll see them a lot at GCSE. We've got carbon dioxide and we've got calcium carbonate or limestone. And we can have one mole of carbon dioxide and one mole of calcium carbonate if we want. And each of those will contain 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules. Remember, molecules, not atoms, because a compound has more than one atom, but even different types of atoms joined together. So in the carbon dioxide, for example, we've got carbon and two oxygens. But I couldn't look on the periodic table to find the mass number of carbon dioxide because it's not an element. I couldn't look on the periodic table to find the mass number of calcium carbonate because it's not an element. So how do I actually find out what one mole, for example, of carbon dioxide would weigh when carbon dioxide itself isn't an element and it's not going to show me these numbers at the top on the periodic table. It's not going to have these mass numbers on the periodic table. So how do I figure out what one mole of carbon dioxide should weigh? Well, what I do is I look at the individual elements in it. My carbon dioxide contains carbon and oxygen. I look for the mass number of carbon, which is 12, and I look for the mass number of oxygen, which is 16 but I've got two oxygens, and I'm just gonna add them all together. So, 12. This is brilliant, look, he's just realized he's made a mistake on his PowerPoint. It should say 12 plus 16 plus 16. Look at how confused his stupid face is. Yeah, there was no mistake, that was uh, deliberate. Um, so, if I was gonna add them all together, my carbon is 12, my oxygen is 16, but I've got two of them, so I have 12 plus 16 plus 16, and that gives me 44 grams. So 44 grams of carbon dioxide will give me 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules, right? 6.02 uh, times 10 to the 23 molecules, remember is Avogadro's number, and that's the amount of molecules I need to make a mole of carbon dioxide. So 44 grams equals one mole. Okay, so I think I've got the basics to this now, and I want some really tricky questions. All right, I've got a tricky question for you. Go on, Slaphead. If you're so clever, why do you still poo in the garden? Do you not know how to use a toilet? No, not questions like that. Um, questions on moles, please. So this video is going to be short and sweet. We're going to end by testing ourselves with some simple questions based on what we've just done. And then in the follow-up videos to this, we're gonna look at how things can get more and more and more complicated with moles, um, all the way up to the, the higher tier triple chemistry questions that you might get. But for now, we need to know that we've got a good handle on the basics. So here are five questions. Um, on the right-hand side in red are the mass numbers of each of the elements that you'll need. And I'm just gonna leave you a little while before I come back and talk you through how they are done. Take it away, Kat. Okay, so here are your questions. I've put them up on the screen for you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you two choices. You can either, number one, just pause the video now and work it out before we give you the answers. Or you can try and work it out while I do the sound uh, from the countdown clock as a countdown. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Dum 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 dum
So let's start with question one. How many moles are there in 48 grams of magnesium? Well, that becomes dead easy if you know how many grams make up one mole of magnesium. And we look on the right hand side for that and we can see that magnesium has a mass number of 24. Therefore, 24 grams is one mole. So if 24 grams is one mole, then 48 grams, intuitively, you're going to know is going to be two moles. Now, if you're looking for an equation to help you with that, then we always take the number of grams we've got, we take the mass that we actually have in our hand, and we divide it by the mass number of the element. All right, that might be the equation. If, you, if you're one of these people that likes writing equations down for, for everything, write that equation down. The number of uh, grams we have divided by the mass number. Let's go on to question two, and we're going to do the same thing. The number of grams we have of calcium is 20. The mass number of calcium we can see on the right is 40. So 20 divided by 40 gives us 0.5 moles. We've got half a mole of calcium. And sometimes numbers will come out as, as less than one. All right, don't be afraid of that. Um, if we have less grams than, or the number of grams we've got is smaller than the mass number, it's going to come out as less than one. Um, the final sort of simple one out of these five, 69 grams of sodium. Well, sodium has a mass number of 23. Therefore, one mole is 23 grams. So 69 grams divided by 23 gives us three moles of sodium. Next one. What is the mass of four moles of methane? Here's where it starts to get just a little bit harder because I have to... First of all, find out what the mass of one mole of methane is by adding together the mass numbers of the elements in it. We know that carbon has a mass of 12, the hydrogen has a mass of one, so 12 plus the four hydrogens, so 12 plus one plus one plus one plus one gives us 16. And that is the 16 grams there will be one mole of methane, but I wanna know about four moles of methane. So I'm gonna times that 16 by four to give me 64. And you'll notice that I have deliberately or not deliberately left the units off that number. So that should be 64 grams. It wasn't deliberate, it's an idiot. Make sure you always put your units on. So this last question is really probably the hardest of this more basic type question. We're being asked to figure out the number of molecules that we have in uh, a certain mass of a compound. So we're told we have 88 grams of carbon dioxide. Well, if I want to know how many molecules I've got, I'm going to remember that one mole has 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules, right? I'm going to remember that. So if I can figure out how many moles I've got, then I'm just going to times that by 6.02 times 10 to the 23 to find out how many molecules there are. So if I've got 88 grams of carbon dioxide, I need to find the mass of one mole of carbon dioxide, which we did before. We figured out that it was 44 grams. Remember the 12 plus a 16, plus a 16, because we had two oxygens. So how many moles of carbon dioxide do I have? It's 88 grams divided by 44. But I'm going to times that by Avogadro's number. I'm going to times that by 6.02 times 10 to the 23 to give me 1.2 times 10 to the 24 molecules. Now we're going to build on this in the next video. But for now, this video is over. Yep, so OK, bye. You can turn this off now. Yeah, can you let me say goodbye, please? It is my video. No, I can't. We all know who the real star of the show is. Bye.